There's a lot of news on the reproductive justice front. Recently, I had a chance to talk to the nation's Catholic about it. Take a look. In Chapter 11 of Light of the World, the new book based on interviews with Pope Benedict, the pontiff says condom use by people like male prostitutes is a lesser evil if it would protect their partners from getting a deadly infection like AIDS. This is a big deal uh, because it's the first time the Vatican has talked about condoms in a positive way as uh, a way to prevent AIDS. Well, is it a big deal? Not if you're simply someone like a woman seeking to avoid a possibly dangerous pregnancy. That's still not peachy with the pontiff. And what about Congress? It was said to be an election solely about economic and big government issues, right? Well, not so fast as our next guest. Some of those very same Tea Partiers who so hate government regulation are very hot on policing of women and choice. Here to sort through the morality morass and more, we speak with the nation columnist Katha Pollitt, known for her essay collections, two volumes of poetry, and she's the 31st recipient of the American Book Award for Lifetime Achievement. More on that in a bit. Katha, first, the pontiff. Big news, small, medium? Well, the conservatives in the church are certainly trying to minimize it. Nothing new here, move on, nothing to see. Uh, but I think it is big. Um, I think maybe the Pope uh, was making a very, very nuanced theological statement, but it will certainly give the go-ahead to the large number of health workers, including those working in Catholic organizations in Africa where, you know, AIDS um, transmission is still astronomical. It will give them the go-ahead to say, okay, fine, I can interpret the Pope as saying it's okay to use a condom. But as you've written, yes, absolutely, huge when, with respect to um, disease transmission, but with respect to women and preventing unwanted pregnancies, even dangerous one, can it be applied there? Is there any leeway? If I, can, if I a prostitute, can use a condom be, out of some kind of concern for my client or for myself, um, to prevent the transmission of HIV, why can't I also show that same concern and use the condom to prevent pregnancy, which is also a health concern? I do not understand why this logic um, has no purchase on uh, the Pope's thinking. Let's shift to Congress for a second, because you've been writing about this, and thank heavens for you, because so few did. In the coverage of the new Congress, we were told over and over again this was an election decided on economics. You said not exactly. Well, I think a lot of people might have voted on the basis of economics, although having said that, you have to wonder what were they thinking when they said, uh, you know, voted for the people who helped make the problem <laughs> and whose solution is certainly not going to work. Um, but whatever were their they were thinking about who they were voting for. What, uh, they were also voting, in many cases, for people who are very, very anti-choice. Give us some examples. Well, um, an example would be Rand Paul. Um, I, maybe that's the best example. Uh, Rand Paul ran as big libertarian, and like a lot of libertarians, it's a sort of curious thing. They, liberty stops. <laughs> liberty stops when it's a question of abortion. Um, and uh, Rand Paul is tremendously anti anti-abortion rights. Now, this is an interesting thing. He filled out one of these uh, questionnaires from an anti-choice organization in which he checked all the boxes. Um, are you against, uh, you know, uh, medication that would cause a f the uh, prevent implantation? Oh, yes, yes. And he goes on and on. And so I said he was against, because of his answers to this question, I said he was not only against legal abortion, he was also against many methods of birth control. Uh, for example, the IUD prevents implantation. Some, in some cases, maybe the pill does that. I mean, a lot of them work in multiple ways. Um, and a lot of, and he's also against um, stem cell research, destruction of the fetus, and um, uh, fertility clinics, fertility um, uh, things, which also uh, result in the destruction of many embryos. Um, then I was criticized um, for making this leap on, on uh, National Review Online, but I, because he didn't actually say, yes, I will ban the pill if I get to be right. in the Senate. I will do my best to do that. Um, 
But nonetheless, those were the answers he gave, and that's what I went on. Now, there are a lot of people that say, well, but they're never going to actually move on any of these things, because if they moved on actually making abortion more illegal or more inaccessible than it is, um, they wouldn't have anything to fundraise on. That it's just a ruse. Thomas Frank wrote about it. It's just a ruse for the right to fear, to, to, to raise fears around abortion, and then they get elected and actually bring down hell on the economic front. You don't agree that it's just a ruse, and in fact, you've laid out in your columns for the nation, some of the changes that are happening and threaten to happen even as early as this lame duck Congress. What are a few that we should be keeping an eye on? Well, some people think that even the restrictions on um, uh, Obama's health care reform are uh, preventing abortion coverage, making very, you don't have to write all these different checks, all that. That's not enough. So what they want to do is to uh, use the tax code, among other uh, governmental uh, entities, use the tax code to prevent you, for example, from deducting your co-pays from your taxes if you have an insurance plan that, you know, that has anything to do with abortion. What about the global gag rule? Well, they want to uh, bring that back and make it permanent. Um, a lot of these things have to be reauthorized and uh, so they go back and forth. Um, this is no U.S. money to organizations means, abroad that even give people information right, about Right. You know, a lot of people think that what the global gag rule does is it prevents uh, organizations abroad that perform, uh, you know, from getting American dollars to perform abortions. But that's not really what it is. I mean, a gag is a gag on speech. So what it really means is that you can't refer someone to an abortion provider, you can't lobby your own government mm. uh, to change often tremendously restrictive abortion laws in foreign countries. But isn't there a danger? I mean, whether it's the Stupak on steroids bill, as it's, it's fondly mm. called, or the global gag rule, or some of the other laws that would um, basically defund Planned Parenthood in states right. across the country in the name of health care reform implementation, isn't there a danger there could be a backlash? I mean, some of these Tea Partiers really do at least ostensibly believe in shrinking government, and some are more libertarian than the others, aren't they? Well, there might be a fight between the teacups, I don't know. <laughs> but, but I think that a, the trouble with a lot of these rules, these a lot of the anti-abortion stuff, is that it flies a little bit under the radar. The, uh, the big uh, uh, increase in difficulty in getting an abortion has to do with state regulations. Yeah. Um, and those often happen in states where uh, the anti-choice forces are quite powerful. And we've um, seen a massive decline in democratic, democ uh, democratic majorities in the states across the country. That's right. Um, many, many state legislatures with bicameral legislatures now are totally controlled by the Republicans. An example is um, Kansas, where Senator, the former Senator Brownback is now the governor. Um, and he's, uh, you know, just a big brand name in the anti-abortion uh, business. And so um, I would think that they, it would be not at all impossible for Kansas to um, move ahead with some of the um, yeah. things on the anti-choice so, agenda. Uh, so you as being one of the country's most well-known and consistent feminist columnists receive a lot of mail from people about what's happening in their states, a lot of things for you to cover. What are some of the kind of concerns that people have? And how do you respond to so much? I mean, it's crazy there's kind of a quota of one in our um, independent so-called progressive media that addresses this on a regular basis. Well, yeah, I think that's really true. I think a lot of people are bored with abortion. And they think, look, they think the way Thomas Frank does, which is basically, look, Roe v. Wade is the law of the land. Nobody really wants to change it because that would uh, result in too much political destabilization. It's not even in the interest of the Republicans actually to do it. But what those people are missing is that sometimes you awaken genies that you can't put back in that bottle. Um, the people who are anti-choice are very passionate about what they believe. I've got to get your take on, on, us, on Sarah Palin's new book. And I know we're running out of time, but I just want to play a quick clip from her and ask you whether there's anything new in the Palin attack on feminism. Take a look. I believe that the takeaway for many in this book is going to be some controversy caused by the chapter that I write in there about the, the disservice that some of these um, feminists actually um, cause uh, uh, other women because, because Gretchen, what they do is uh, 
And they make women feel inferior, incompetent. Uh, too often, these feminists make women feel that they're not capable of being able to work inside or outside the home and raise a family and do all that uh, you know God provides us via opportunity. It seems like at least a 30-year-old argument against feminism. Is it still powerful? And is there anything new here? I think Sarah Palin, in her high-energy kind of loopy way has taken these arguments that are, you know, Camille Paglia said this kind of thing, and although she was pro-choice, uh, Christine Hoff Summers, Christina Hoff Summers said this kind of thing in Who Stole Feminism, but she packages them in a particularly kind of boiled down, over-emotional, um, intense way that probably is seductive for some people. Sorry. <laughs> Katha Pollitt, subject to debate. You can find her column in The Nation magazine. We'll put a link at our website. Thanks for coming in.